Here's another demonstration on how we can use a combination of your 2D drafting tools, your lines, arcs, polygons, etc., and and you know objects with zero thickness such as surfaces to then uh, combine together, constrain, use some variables to create uh, a solid feature. So what we'll do, we'll start with our 2D objects, and we'll use these as a rig. So we'll start with, with placing a smart line. Um, We'll just place that on the screen, just like so. And then what we'll do, update it around a little, we'll put the arc in play. So we'll do a, an arc from this point here, and we'll just rotate it around to that point there. Okay, so we have some type of uh, little arc system here. So what we can do here is now um, start with the constraints. So we'll, we'll start with a, a coincident constraint on the end of the arc there, on the end of the line there, and another coincident constraint on there, and another coincident constraint there. And what that means now is you know, we can start to, to move this line around, and you can see the arc go, go with. So with the arc, it can be moved, and the line goes with. So what we might do is, is look to extrude a solid right around this, this arc here eventually. So what we'll do, <clears throat> Is we'll create a, a just a little line down here. Now that line is is going to be our extrusion around. Now first things first we need to do what we might do is give this a dimensional constraint. So dimensional constraints are here, and we can do this by adding a variable. So let's add the variable first. We'll hit new, and we'll call this we'll call this one um, arc thickness, and we'll give it a length of a thousand. And we can use the dimensional constraint to just dimension off that and say arc thickness. Okay, there it is there. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll move that particular line right to the edge there. So it's right on the center point and again, give that a coincident constraint. So, so we will choose the midpoint of the little line and then, then the end of the, the larger line. Now that is a constraint right in there now. So from here, we can then use this line to actually build a solid right around the arc. So we go to our solid ribbon, we can choose extrude along. Let's have a look at our settings here. We might give this a thickness. Okay, so it expands outwards. We've already got the depth as, a, as the arc thickness, and we'll, we'll actually we'll give it a depth instead. So what we can say is say, give a new variable, arc depth. <clears throat> and in here, we can give it a value of say 500. And then we can choose, it says down the bottom here, select path element, and then we can select our profile element. And there is our revolving solid built from those rigs. So as we move those around, we can, we can do that. Now, obviously we can then drill into uh, the pieces here to act on, on what we need to. So, in here, for example, we could indeed say um, that what I would like to do here is revolve that around a little further. We can change the edge and do things like that. Okay, so what that means now is that we can start to have a look at uh, building a few more pieces onto this little solid and make up a, a more larger solid um, that we can play with. But first things first, I might actually give this a, a new little level name up here, um, and we'll call this one rib. So I've already got a level set up there for rib, and uh, that particular rib looks like a bit of galvanized steel there. Okay, so for the next piece, we'll go back to using the level called shell. So what we'll do is we'll copy <clears throat> this one along five times. So using our copy tool, I'm going to select all the objects, click on the screen. Uh, I'm going to select five in there, click into AccuDraw, point in the direction I want to go and say 1500 or 15,000, better still. And we get our five copies of the object. Now, underlying here, if I go to a uh, wireframe, we'll zoom in a little, go to a wireframe view, you can see that we have our underlying um, arc here. We can use this to loft a surface right along. So uh, go to our surface tab up here and we go to the loft 
and I can run a line right across those objects. Click on the screen and there is our surface that runs across there like that. Now, of course, the surface is only a zero thickness object. Um, there is no volume to it or whatever. So um, what we'll do there is say, create a new variable called surface thickness. And we'll give it a thickness of um, 300 to begin with. And it means now we can get our solid tab, choose the thicken tool, change the variable to certain surface thickness click on the, the surface itself and give it a little bit of thickness there. Okay, very good. Now the final piece we want to observe here, obviously we've got our variables in play here. So obviously we can change those and we can um, ch change the look and, and appearance of different aspects of this. We just change the thickness there. We can also change the depth, make it 1500. But what we want to do is be able to manually change the appearance of this by pulling and pull it, pulling and pushing our rig. So remember at the, the very beginning of our, of our little tutorial, we had our little handles. And what that means is when we play, start to pull and push these little handles, it means all our ob objects that are built from this rig will move to adjust. Okay, so again, we'll pull this rig here and we can observe this particular object changing as we as we make those those changes okay so um, a very simple way to build up a collection of parametric objects that can change and react to pull handles push handles um, and variables as well um, and it gives us a great deal of geometrical flexibility uh, being able to set up a history based uh, rig like this to do certain design objectives.